At this point, I feel like Amazon products with performance claims in the title is kind of like countries with democracy in their name. You should probably take it with a grain of salt. But before we have a look at the definitely a 4K gaming graphics card I bought off of Amazon, it's time for today's video sponsor. Have you ever wondered where I get all the awesome music for my videos? Well, it all comes from Epidemic Sound. Songs like... To... This one's just awesome. How about some sound effects? Epidemic Sound offers a huge library of high-quality royalty-free music and sound effects with a library that's growing by the week. And you never have to worry about copyright claims. Sign up using the link in my video description to get a free month trial. And even if you cancel after the free trial, your content will stay copy strike free. Thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. Now looking at this very plain unmarked brown box, which actually came via Prime next day shipping, uh, but my thoughts have shifted from it just being a terribly marketed, horrendously overpriced graphics card to it's a scam GTS 450, isn't it? But either way, let's open up the box of shame and see what's going on in here. Oof, that's a bad sign as well. It comes with the super official looking driver disc that's a staple of all scam graphics cards. Even the instructions. You know driver install instructions are legit when they tell you specifically not to download official drivers from NVIDIA's website. Come on. Oh, there we go. Although actually, on first impression, I think this may not be a scam graphics card because it's got some key differences to every scam graphics card I've ever seen in my life. And not meaning to brag, but I've been scammed a lot buying graphics cards. Uh, now, the first difference, which may not mean a whole lot, but the general build quality of the graphics card seems more in line with a normal graphics card. It doesn't have that distinct fished out of a Shenzhen dumpster vibe to it that scam graphics cards usually have. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean much. This could just be the Rolex of scam graphics cards. Uh, another thing is the rear IO on this graphics card because every single scam graphics card I've looked at up until this point has had a Mesozoic period port on the back, whereas this one has DVI, DisplayPort, and HDMI, which that's a rear IO that kind of makes sense for the graphics card that this is supposed to be, which is a GTX 960, which is by no means a 4K gaming graphics card, but I, I kind of, I'm kind of hopeful that this may actually be a GTX 960. And even if it isn't, it's possible this is a new species of scam graphics card, which would be very exciting. So with that, let's throw this graphics card into a system and see what it does, and then try and do some 4K gaming with it. Nice. Okay, that's promising. It's not doing that only displaying the image on the center of the display thing that scam graphics cards do. And the NVIDIA drivers it told me not to download installed and identifies it as a GTX 960. So it seems to be a real graphics card. So let's jump to the future, take the graphics card apart and have a closer look at the real boy. Ooh, we've got some thermal pad touching the power delivery, which is real fancy. Uh, other than that, it seems a bit like an evolution of the Scam graphics card cooler, in that it's kind of just like a, a block of aluminium that they then cut grooves out of to like increase cooling surface area. And I don't know, maybe it even comes out of the same factory. Now on the PCB, we've got what looks like three power phases for the GPU. And then I think this top one is a single phase for the memory. That is a real basic power delivery, but it should be okay for a GTX 960. Wow, it looks like somebody wrote a thesis on this GPU. Look at that. Even the memory modules have been vandalized. 
And in here we have our GM206 300A1 die, which again is just confirmation that this is in fact a GTX 960. Now I thought we should have a quick look at the marketing material behind this real graphics card, because it is hilariously unique. Now it starts off pretty tame with powerful function and how the 4K HDR technology gives the gaming graphics card a clearer, brighter and large picture. But then they start talking about it being lightweight and portable. The graphics card is light in weight, easy to install, and convenient to carry when going out. I'm pretty sure I've never seen a graphics card manufacturer brag about how easy their graphics card is to take with you to the club. They then talk about the excellent material and how the graphics card is made of PCB material. That's like saying this house is so well built out of house material. But it is reassuring to see that they offer a 100% warranty. Anyway, with that, let's see if this 4K gaming graphics card can actually do some 4K gaming. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen GTA 5 look this clear and bright before. And this is just a 1080p. We haven't even gotten to 4K yet. Now at 1080p high settings, we are getting over 70 frames per second with this GTX 960, which I don't think really gives us enough headroom for 4K gaming, but we'll, we'll see in a little bit. On a side note, the cooler is clearly decent. Uh, we've got about 60 degrees Celsius on the GPU, and that's with it drawing about 90 watts. The frame pacing is remarkably good for GTA 5. Look at that, it's all smooth and it's, it's running very consistently actually. So that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty nice, uh, which means I think we need to move over to a more demanding, more modern game and see what Battlefield 5 does. Let's do that. Wow, the GTX 960 is actually holding up very nicely these days. Battlefield 5 running at 1080p medium settings is giving us a very stable above 60 frame per second result. And I mean, look at that frame time graph. It's so smooth and stable. That's very cool. Um, also, the game looks pretty nice. Like, it, it, it doesn't look that much worse than... Ah. It doesn't look that much worse than running at high settings. Although with Battlefield 5, the temperatures are quite a bit higher on this graphics card, so that lightweight, easy to carry construction is really being pushed to the limit here. So, but yeah, anyway, generally, the GTX 960 at 1080p gives reasonable results. Uh, that is in Battlefield 5. Let's try an even more demanding game before we move over to the advertised use case for this 960. Now, when it comes to Cyberpunk, its ability to scale up to 4K is a bit less promising uh, because here with 1080p low settings, we're sitting roughly in the 30 frame per second range. It's not running super well, but it, it's usable. You know, you can see that it's a very stable 30-ish frames per second, which means it kind of feels like playing a game on the PS2, you know? Uh, although it definitely doesn't feel like playing Cyberpunk on a PlayStation, because that is a very, very, very different experience to this. But I think with that, we finally need to try some 4K gaming on this system. So let's do that. Now the fact that GTA 5 will even let us apply the resolution is a promising start. Now like I did in the 8K gaming PC video, I am going to leave GTA 5 on high settings because I feel like it's quite reasonable to expect a 4K gaming capable graphics card in 2022 to be able to run like a 6 year old game on high settings at 4K. So. Uh, let, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Wow, okay, that is actually more playable than I was expecting it to be. This GTX 960 may actually be a 4K capable gaming graphics card at this rate. Let's actually, let's, let's, let's drop it down to low. Damn, I clearly underestimated the little GTX 960. It may just be GTA 5 with low settings, but we are actually gaming in 4K to some reasonable capacity. And it's not Half-Life 2, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what happens with Battlefield 5. <laughs> Those are some good textures right there. This may by no means be a usable multiplayer 4K experience, but at low settings, Battlefield 5 again is running better than I was expecting, especially compared to just the menu hell we got in 8K with the 8K mini gaming PC from that earlier video. So 
Yeah, good job, little GTX 960. But now let's try a real challenge, Cyberpunk. Oof, okay, well, clearly Cyberpunk at 4K low settings was just a step too far. Uh, but again, I'm impressed that we didn't need to stoop down to Half-Life 2 to get a playable result at 4K, just considering what normally happens with these Amazon products. So not taking the price into account, it wasn't quite the 16-car highway pileup I was expecting. The GTX 960 can actually kinda play some games in 4K. But what if I told you that the seller was selling this GTX 960, a graphics card that you can buy used for like 70 Canadian dollars, for 325 Canadian dollars. I don't care how portable that graphics card is, that price is insane. That's basically RX 6600 money, which even that would be a stretch to describe as a 4K gaming graphics card, but it does perform a hell of a lot better at 4K than the GTX 960. Anyway, with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider watching another one. A suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.